Today I have two boxes of straight flying golf balls. Yes, that's right, golf balls are designed to fly straighter so you can hit more fairways. One of which you can buy in your local pro shop, take out into your Sunday medal, tee it up and go and win and not be disqualified. The other one, however, made infamous by a certain Rick Shields, is the Polara Ultimate Straight Golf Ball. This is an illegal straight flying golf ball. How much difference is there going to be between a legal straighter flying golf ball and an illegal straight flying golf ball? Guys, get in the comments below how much difference is there going to be. We're going to play a couple of holes here today at Woolley Park Golf Club to find out. And also let me know, would you use an illegal golf ball if you were just playing with your friends for the laugh and you were really struggling keeping the ball in play? Or would you use a legal straighter flying golf ball? I'll get through the technology in both these golf balls in this video. We're going to test them in the studio as well. See just how much difference there really is. We're going to kick things off on the opening hole here at Waterfront Golf Club. Straight as you like, no fairway bunkers. Do not go left here because you will lose your golf ball. But then again, these are straighter flying golf balls. So as long as we aim correctly, we should be okay. Okay guys, we'll kick things off. I'm not going to tell you which ball we are using first. And I want you guys to comment below and let me know which ball you think is which. Right. Imagine knowing a golf ball is going to fly straight. That must be the best feeling in the world. Right. Straight down the middle with that one. I'm not sure if that was altered in flight or not. Remember, we are going to talk tech through these as well, because one of these golf balls, as I said, is legal, is from one of the biggest names in golf, Callaway. And I think there is something in this ball. This is really what this video is about. I'd love to see my dad use that kind of golf ball that just isn't necessarily about distance, but is about keeping the ball in play. And that's another one down the left side of the fairway. Let's do this. Oh, beautiful. So just what is the tech behind these golf balls? So as I mentioned, the Callaway Max golf ball is a totally legal golf ball. You can buy it from your local PJ Pro, and that is designed to be slightly bigger than a normal golf ball. That means that there's less spin axis and it is max distance and max forgiveness. You can see a little bit of it. It is designed for increased consistency and a nice high launch, which we did see off the tee. It was actually the second ball. I'll throw that on screen for you now. That's another one down the left side of the fairway. And the Polara Ultimate Straight Self-Correction Golf Ball. That features a totally different dimple pattern. It is illegal for use, but you can hit it a lot straighter. So if you're not 100% satisfied, you can get your money back. I've had these quite a while, so unfortunately, we won't be getting our money back there. The one thing I'll say about these is they do sort of tend to dip out the flight a little bit, but you can tend to hit it a little bit straighter. Is that straight enough? Let's find out. And you see, often when I test illegal golf balls or illegal golf clubs, they're illegal because they don't conform to the RNA rules or the USGA rules, but it doesn't necessarily make them better. That's one thing I will hold my hands up and say, just because something isn't within the rules, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to perform a lot better for you. Let's see how this test goes today. Really, this is a test of the Callaway Supersoft Max because I think it's a great golf ball that's often overlooked. You can see we've got two balls down the left-hand side there. We've actually missed the fairway with one of them, and one of them's gone about 20 yards further than the other. I would think that Callaway's gone further because the Polara had kind of like dipped out the air a little bit, and you can see that that is the Polara here, but it is a fairway ticked off. I think I'd rather be up there, though. In the semi rough. Now, this is where winter rules and masters are going to help us because the Polara only goes straight if you line it up on its ultimate straight axis. I'm not going to spend too long talking about this, but you can basically see how the dimples are a lot thicker on each side. You probably saw Rick's video a couple of years ago when the dimples are a lot thinner in the middle, so it should stay a little bit online if we aim online. Obviously, you couldn't just do this on a normal round of golf, but because winter rules are in play now, I can line my ball up. So that's bang on to the flag. Really, there's no reason why we shouldn't put this about three feet from the flag now, is there? Pretty much. I'll tell you what, in fairness, that is at it. <laughs> Go on. Right, it faded a little bit, but that actually felt a lot better than I remember the ball feeling. I remember it feeling a little bit cheap and tacky, when realistically, certainly not the cheapest golf balls you would ever buy. And I don't know when someone would use them. Like, would you use them as a practical joke? Would you use them if you're playing against your dad or your brother? If I tried to use them against my dad or my brother, they'd certainly be claiming the game. So, rules are rules, I guess. 
And I really want this video to show that there are products out there that can help you hit it straighter legally. So the oversized golf ball is designed to be a little bit easy to hit. It doesn't go as far, and I tested the original Magna golf ball, um, and that was a little bit, let's go seven from here. And that was a little bit of a kind of revelation to me really, but it never sold. I've never seen anybody say, oh guys, I'm playing with a Callaway Super Soft Max today or a Magna today, but we're into the wind. The wind will affect it more because it's more of a bigger shape. So there's more surface area for the wind to attack. Can I keep it nice and low? Because that Polara was a lovely low flight into the green. That's on the green, I think. Just going left, kept it nice and low. Right, so far, so good. So this is what we are left with. We have the illegal golf ball there and the legal golf ball here. Very, very similar. I think distance wise, I'm very happy with both of those, to be honest. I'll have a put at both of these because putting is such a vital part of the game. So many people might think, oh, as long as I hit it straight off the tee, then that's job done. If you can't put with these golf balls, remember a bigger golf ball is going to be harder to hold than a smaller golf ball because it only just fits in the hole a little bit more. And it does look massive, massive <laughs> down on the green. Like when you tee it up, you get a sense of how big it is. But then as soon as you put putter behind ball, it's really like, wow. Should I take the flag out because of the size of the ball? Maybe. It's a lovely roll on it though. Oh, I felt fantastic. Felt just like a Callaway Super Soft in fairness. Par. And again here, I'm going to use this ball to its full capabilities. I'm going to give it a bit of a clean, maybe in the rough, and line it up. Does it make it hold every putt ultimately straight? Maybe. You see, I'm just not sure if this one is smaller than a regulation ball or if it's just smaller than the Callaway that we're comparing it to. This is to go one up illegally. That felt awful off the face. Awful. Two pars. Right guys, that is the first hole halved in par. We have a par five coming up. This should help us hit it a little bit harder because we know it's not gonna to deviate too far, hopefully, than a stunning par three to see just exactly what is potentially the best ball if you're trying to hit the ball straighter and if you're struggling. Let's have a quick test just to see how these balls do compare around the green because this is something which a lot of people wouldn't necessarily test with straighter flying golf balls. I'm not even gonna look at which ones these are and see just kind of what results oh, that we do get because if it's no good around the greens then realistically I actually duffed that one, that wasn't very good at all. You're never going to use it. Oh, that felt so nice. Go on then. Go on. I don't know if the bigger ball just feels like it puts you at ease a little bit more. Like that felt like it launched really high. Lots of nice kind of landing angle. The first two were illegal Polara balls. But I feel like I can even get a little bit of spin on there, which you're never going to get from this illegal one. This is illegal to finish and you see I haven't lined that one up because you can't do that in everyday golf but so far so good I'm not going to complain with either of those I do prefer the feel of the Callaway massively though and even when you're just testing these balls for feel you do start to kind of generate a bit of a, a complex about the Polara because it just doesn't sound very nice at all compared to all the other golf balls that I test. Okay, par five, time for big dog again. You can see this par five just sweeps around to the left ever so slightly, a huge bunker on the right-hand side you don't want to mess with, and we need to get it out there if we are going to try and get this green in two. Now, if I was a betting man, I'd strongly say that this is going to be a three-shotter with both of these balls, but it's going to come down to how close can we get it from pitch shots or maybe even full wedges. I feel like the Callaway, at least I can try and play a little bit of a draw here and squeeze out as much distance as possible whereas the illegal ball I'm just going to try and have to take the tiger line that's the thing a golf ball curving in the air isn't always a bad thing if you've got a shot you want to play you want to be able to play it don't you, you don't want to have to aim just over the rubbish like that for example is the perfect drive on this hole slightly toey 
drawing down the middle, wonderful. Let's line up the illegal ball. This has to just go straight now, really. See, you just struggle to launch. Like, that's one of the things probably about these dimples. You can't get that ball launching. It's just gone really low. It's gone straight, but that's gonna be a long way you in. See, now this is interesting because now we can't line this up. Winter rules do say you can place it in the fairway and we haven't found the fairway there. That one actually dipped a little bit. So not a fantastic tee shot there. Hopefully this ball doesn't do absolutely anything and go out of bounds or in a hazard when I try and hit a nice layup. Just forget what this ball's about and play a golf shot. Yeah, that'll do. Felt incredibly firm when you don't hit it on the area of the ball you're supposed to hit it, but that's okay, that's a nice layup. The Callaway once again quite a way further up. We might be able to just have a go here and because this is supposed to fly a little bit straighter, I'm gonna have a go at this and see if we can really get a foot down in this mat. The Super Soft Max is designed for slower swing speeds, so no way am I gonna really try and smash or attack this. I'm just gonna put a nice gentle swing on the three wood. Hopefully it goes around 240, 250. That should cover the ground for us. We're into the wind though. And again, the size of the ball means it's gonna be affected a bit more. Just a nice golf swing, nice and straight. Oh, that is all over it. Be good, be good. Oh, I think it's just in the bunker, sure. That's such a shame, because that felt lovely. Really, it's left a massive ball print on the face. <laughs> Huge, it's like a bit of basketball. It, the more I test this Callaway Super Soft Max, it's like, not for me personally, but I think for a lot of golfers, it's quite a good idea. And I mean, I don't know if the R&D costs a lot to make them or something, but I'm quite surprised that these kind of direct consumer brands such as Seed, such as Vice, such as maybe even Kirkland, haven't thought about doing that themselves, about bringing out a slightly bigger ball at less cost, because obviously it's still in the super soft family. It's still, I mean, it's not the most expensive ball, but it's certainly not the cheapest ball either. Now with the Polara, we are in the fairway, so I can, Play a little bit of a chip, I think we'll go a nice chippy nine iron. And it feels like there's really no point gauging distance here because this ball just goes as far as it wants to go depending on which, um, depending on which dimple that you actually hit it on. It does get you good at lining the ball up though. Up and down for a birdie. You see that feels like it should be cutting, but it has stayed nice and straight. That one's on the green and it's a chance. That's probably the first time where I feel like that ball has reacted like it's supposed to do, and I feel a bit dirty for it. I'll get the divot. We've actually avoided the bunker as well, so it was bang on line, just didn't quite have the distance to get up there. You can see we do have a birdie put with the illegal ball. Let's try and get this one even closer. So we haven't managed to get anywhere near the green in two with both of these balls. But that felt delightful. That could end up being nice, you know. So you still get a nice bit of grab with that, which I quite like. I mean, like I said, it's not the cheapest ball in the world, but you still get what you'd expect, control. And it comes down to this on the par five. Two interesting birdie putts. But again, it's pretty stress-free realistically. We've not had a lot of grab on that Polara because it pitched all the way over here, actually. So for a 99 out of fairway, not a lot of control. He's got it as well. Oh, that's just, just stayed there and that one's gone long. That's not a gimme. And it's amazing how when I test an illegal length golf ball, an illegal straight flying golf ball, any kind of golf ball, a Pro V1, it's always nice to know the numbers and how straight it goes. We'll get into that in a second, but it always comes down to this. Always comes down to the flat stick and can you hold a putt? I'm gonna say we kind of fancy this just outside right, nice pace, turn. Oh, that feels like the big ball doesn't move as much. Don't know if that's factual, but it felt like that just kind of stayed straight par. This to not go one down with one to go. Now what's happened there is justice has prevailed. <laughs> Because if you look at what's happened, first of all, I've been really lazy and not took the flag out, which is on the lean a little bit. But the reason why it's on the lean is because that massive golf ball in there is pushing the flag to that side. So um, 
that's one up to the legal Callaway, mainly because of its uh, brute force. Interesting. Okay, it all comes down to this. The legal ball, the Callaway is one up due to flag gate. I'm not sure if that was legal or not, but it's basically coming off the top rope and absolutely annihilated the legal ball, but we'll take it. We're gonna go Callaway first. It's got the honor, it's one up. I love this hole. Let's try and hit the green with this Callaway. Lots of greening regs so far. I've struck that really nicely. That is a really nice strike. And that is another greening reg, right? Par three with the illegal ball. And basically if I line this up at the flag correctly, it should be a hole in one, but would it count? I, I wouldn't count it. I wouldn't count it. Can we launch it more than anything? Oh, that is carbon copy, very nice. Quite enjoyed that. Right, it's a put off to see what's the best straight flying golf ball, legal or illegal. I know which one I'd be putting in the bag and I wouldn't be in jail for it. Like consistency wise, I'm quite happy with that. Again, these are both designed to fly straighter. It doesn't really get much straighter than T all the way to the middle of this green there. Callaway Super Soft Max for the win and for the birdie. What if you put this without lining it up? Because not everyone wants to line up putts. It feels awful when it's not on the line that it's supposed to be, but it's gone the right distance, so I can't complain too much. We have a four foot putt for the good guys to stay one up and win the match for the Legal Ball Society. Imagine if that is a thing, the Legal Ball Society. So everyone knows. All day all day oh, so guys let me know what do you think to straight flying golf balls would you use callaway super soft max if it meant hitting more fairways even though people might ask what on earth you're playing with or would you stoop so low as to use an illegal straight flying golf ball I know what i would do i would go with the legal one all day long because to be honest it's even outperformed the illegal straight flyer thanks for watching see you all at the same time tomorrow goodbye